Lawbirds. That's our word. Brought to you by Bipcot and Fiend Phone. We got Fiend Phone working again. Um, I think everybody's happier or not happier. <laughs> we'll see. I got Nick Hazelton. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you, Jim? Pretty good. Um, I got a couple of things to, to get out of the way first before we get into this. Um, we got pot beef and an announcement. Uh, so first of all, uh, I'm going to pod beef a little bit with Lib- Libertarians on Fire. I don't know if you heard the episode that Lisa was on, the last one, um, with the, the the female round table or whatever. But there was a part in it, I think it was Kiki or Carrie, it wasn't Lisa who said it, I can't remember who said it exactly. But she was pointing out that Corey Gaines, Corin Gaines, the, the you know that girl that was shot, um, she was holding her kid with the you know with a shotgun and the, and the police shot her after a traffic stop and she had like you know the sovereign citizen type thing going on with the you know a cardboard license plate that had handwritten like I'm you know I'm not subject to your laws. <laughs> she said that, like you know that that's my person right there and I just wanted to be like I don't think she knew the full story what was going on there. Um, yeah, she had like these crazy sovereign citizen belief, but she also thought that. You know, there actually was a legitimate role for for police, just not the current police that were there because they were killing black people. And she was like brainwashing her kid to thinking that cops are only out to come out and kill you, which, you know, I'm no fan of cops. I'm not no fan of cops. But the idea that they're always out to kill you because the color of your skin is just is nonsense. But the real problem is, like, I don't think that this girl would ever hold her kid up as a meat shield. And use use it as a shield to protect herself from the police while she's brandishing a gun at at people. Bad bad idea, <laughs> bad thing all around. So uh, I don't know if she knew that, but yeah, that's my pod beef. No biggie. Um, and then the other thing is we got a Patreon now. Well, I've had a Patreon, but I updated it, and then I found that they also do this thing. I don't know. Did you ever know about Patreon? How you can have like your own like separate podcast on there, so people who pay can have like an extra podcast. Have you heard about this? I heard this? that that's new. I, I yeah. just recently heard about it. I, I'm not on Patreon. Maybe you should. Well, we're going to talk about your pod fading. <laughs> Maybe you should talk <laughs> about it now. But uh, yeah, Patreon has this thing now where you can set up like this alternative, uh, I guess, yeah, podcast where you can um, release a, a certain one. It's only going out to your Patreons who donated whatever certain amount, like my limit's $2 because, you know, Molyneux loves $2 donations. Go give them $2. Uh, but give me $2 to a month <laughs> and you can get access to the, to the new uh, podcast that I'm creating, which is just kind of like a very raw uncut version where, you know, I talk to the other co-hosts, you know, kind of off the cuff or whatever. Uh, there's already the first episode up there. We did, we did a test episode with the new setup with Baron. So you actually get to hear me like adjusting levels and everything while we're doing it, getting it, making sure everything works, um, working out some glitches, but yeah, but you pod faded, right? You want to talk about your, your previous podcast? You want to tell fill in new people that are listening? Cause we have a lot of new listeners now after the Jack Fest thing. Oh yeah. I, I, I don't think I ever listened to anything from that, but that was, I'm glad you guys, you got to go. Yeah. I wanted to go, but it's a long ways away. But you know, um, it, you got free gas. You got a yak. That's right. I should have done it. I don't know how well they do going through the Nevada heat there or the, yeah, the desert. I don't Nevada. think they do well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I pod faded for um, the last one. I guess the last episode I released was July, and uh, that was talking about pork fest. And I haven't put out an episode yet because I'm I'm focusing on the the farm stuff, and it just got to be too much to do and I just decided to drop the podcast and uh, I was uh, pretty rude. I didn't, I didn't say that I was going to do that and I still haven't released an episode explaining where I've been. Um, so yeah, I, I pod faded. I'm hoping that I can get back to doing episodes um, soon. Next month, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Well, you know, that I kind of missed the podcast. That was the anarcho podcast. Yeah, the anarcho yeah. podcast and people can go listen to that where? Uh, to an-yak.com, an-yak.com, and I'm on iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. What happens if I don't put the dash in? Don't I get, like, some hot Russian girl porn or something? <laughs> yeah, you get a Russian model's website. Um, I think she switched over to a Facebook page, but she did have uh, she did have her own website. I try to keep track of what she's doing a little bit because uh, I want to grab that domain if I can. <laughs> oh, yeah, you should. But yeah, if if you start podcasting, and you should probably look into that Patreon thing, so you can you could do have one where 
you can have your guest word on and you know if you ever do want to do farming updates you can be like oh you know here's a little bit of what's going on in the farm if you want to hear what's going on with the uh with with me shooting coyotes then you have to be <laughs> then you have to you have to pay more for that one you know so yeah i have mine set at two bucks you can set it for whatever you want like the other option that they had was like for you know at fifty dollars or a hundred dollars a month and i'm like wow that have to be a pretty damn good podcast <laughs> for someone to contribute a hundred dollars more to get access to a certain episode it's a pretty damn good podcast but either way so you could probably do something like that but yeah that, yeah i'll have to look into it yeah but everybody pod fades no we, get, we get accused of being pod fading because we do per prn we, we're not like a regular every week thing yeah uh, yeah and if you're gone for two weeks everybody misses you you know mm -hmm. start getting knocks on your door saying where are you at jim <laughs> sniffing at my window smelling for a dead body yeah <laughs> <Did he die? laughs> i do fiends too much for people to think i died so yeah, yeah. that's good I gotta have at least something regular yeah so speaking of farm stories um how is your uh here's your farm going what's, it's what's... going pretty well we're we're making money finally we're at the oh, farmer's good. market and uh selling a lot of yak meat Mm -hmm. And uh, bringing in bringing in some cash, but um, we're building fences. And uh, the the main thing that I'm I'm kind of pissed about is uh, I've got a den of of coyotes living across the road, and they've uh, they've learned that they can snatch my little pigs. So I had I had two litters. They were small litters, surprise bonus litters. They weren't these sows weren't supposed to be bred, but uh, so I had like three in a litter. There was, I think there were six of them. And uh, they slowly started disappearing. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And after the second one, I, I, somebody, uh, one of the neighbors came by and told me that they saw a coyote taking my little piglet. And I was pretty mad. So I, I spent the, last time I was on the fiends, I was going to spend the night out in the field and waiting for them. And so they didn't show up. The coyotes could smell me. <laughs> so I, I just sat there staying up all night. You had the and, windows uh, open and the, the crickets were chirping, weren't they? Yeah, okay. so it was a nice ambiance, but um, it was a beautiful night. It was very warm. It was nice, but uh, no coyotes. And so I, I started, me and my buddy who lives down the road, We, um, I guess last week we decided to try to find the den. We went out there and we called one out and, uh, one night, and I missed. I missed the bastard. But uh, it was a big coyote, and I know that there's at least – Three or four of them in there, but last time we went by, we couldn't find anything. We've been out the last few nights trying to call them out, but I think somebody else got them because um, I've been hearing gunshots like five in the morning. Somebody's getting my coyotes, which I, you know, that's great, but it's my kill. <laughs> <laughs> and are we going to eat them or something? Are we going to roast roast coyote? We're going to skin them. I don't, I don't know what carnivores taste like. I've heard that they don't taste very good. Yeah, I, I heard, have no idea. Yeah, I, I hear I hear cat is very stringy. Um, yeah, I've heard people complain of like who have been to places where they know they serve cat uh, in Asian countries. <laughs> they say it's very stringy and very very lean. Uh, yeah, because you know they they have they have to run around and stuff like that. Whereas livestock just basically sit around all day and they only run if they're ever being chased. Um, yeah, they just which is you. why they're prey. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no luck on the coyotes then, huh? but no. But they got all of my pigs, um, except the the bigger ones. So I lost a thousand dollars to them. But hopefully somebody's somebody got them, or maybe they'll they'll come back at the right time and I'll put a hole in one. Yeah, maybe I should turn my um, cell phone notifications off when people are emailing me <laughs> stuff. It's a guy asking for a refund. Apparently, he he bought a deck of Libertarians Against Humanity, but he didn't notice that. And I guess it's somewhat my fault um, that he uh, that, that the thing said on there, this is only for U.S. Uh, customers. Oh. And it was kind of written as a joke, so he wasn't sure whether or not it was really saying that or not. Somewhat my fault, somewhat his fault, but it's Bitcoin, so I can just send it back with almost no transaction fee. So, yeah. Okay. Speaking of which, which I probably didn't put in my notes anyway, you wanted to ask about Monero. Right? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what this thing is. I've heard Michael talk about it because I was... I was a little bit into the Bitcoin thing, so I know that it's somehow related. Right. But I don't. I barely understand Bitcoin, <laughs> so 
<laughs> I know that there are other cryptocurrencies, but I don't. I guess Monero is becoming popular. Um, it's kind of. It seems like it's the kind of runner up to to Bitcoin. That's kind of the impression I'm getting, but mm -hmm. I don't know how big it is at all. So what's the deal? What what is this? Okay, so you kind of know how Bitcoin works, how the blockchain works, how mining works. Yeah, sort of. Just just enough so you understand it a little bit, because right? <laughs> I yeah, I mean, because I wouldn't be able to you know to relay the white paper in full detail and tell you how the code works. I'm not that sure. into it. So yeah, uh, basically, like you know, you have decentralized people working together and creating a blockchain to make sure that. These things don't create double transactions and how they do it is do it with this public ledger. So everybody sees where, where all the money is coming and going, what accounts have what balances and everything's basically on this large public ledger that contains all the transactions ever made and all the balances of every account. Now, the problem with that is if you're on the dark net, you know, buying things you probably aren't legally allowed to have, which is absolutely terrible terrible for you to do don't do these things you know it's illegal and th that means it's wrong right exactly you studied philosophy that's how that's how ethics works that's if how it's it against works. the law then it's bad yep. um axiomatically but uh yeah so if you have you're doing stuff like that and what they can do is they can say okay sure you're using these accounts that are just long strings of numbers but if i can pin that account to you if you have a website where you say hey i take donations and then they can see money transferring to to Darknet. They know other accounts that are doing the same thing. Then they're going to be, okay, so now we know that this this person just bought whatever uh, on the Darknet, which is terrible and you should go to jail because they're bad people, clearly. Drug people, bad people, horrible. Yes, drug people are bad people. No exceptions. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the problem with it. Now, there's ways you can do it. You can use like Bitfoggers, which sends it out to a bunch of different accounts and it bounces around with other people doing the same thing and it goes out some other output and you don't know whatever where you know it would take forever for you to track it down you could theoretically do it but you know uh you could not ever attach that account to a name whatever but there's still like some privacy issues involved with it well monero is kind of it uses a code called crypto note and crypto note is like this new idea um it was based on another one that i think it was getting hacked and it was a really bad implementation called Bitcoin. And it's kind of not even supported anymore. Um, and Bitcoin was based on CryptoNote. But the other one that was really popular was Monero. And that was based on CryptoNote. The original guy who was creating it, I forget the name of him, uh, ended up leaving. Because he wanted to do something that the, the rest of the community didn't want to do. And so they basically forked the project away from him. Which is kind of neat that you can do something like that with... Uh, with a kind of open source projects, You'd be like, well, if you don't want to do what we want to do, we'll just take your code and fork it and do our own thing. And the community voted with their with their usage, and that's what they're using now. So what it how it works is is instead of having a public ledger where you can see, it's all kind of hidden behind you know cryptography and these hashes. But if you see it, what you see is you see a hash, and then the amounts going uh, are coming and going, but you don't see if they're coming and going and where they're coming and going to. So if I send you, like if I have a hundred dollars in my account and I send you five, it's going to, it's going to take 20 out of there, send 20 out in, into, into this thing, depending on how, what your mix in count is. And it's going to bounce off a bunch of different, different accounts and then give you, give you back what, what extra that you sent out and give the, the, the $5 to you. So what they see is, okay, so, um, 20, 15, 18, 29, uh, you know, all these, all these numbers, but they don't know which, if they're coming or going and where they're going, coming and going to, they just see just the amount values. So you don't know okay. where the money's coming from, where the money's going or how much was sent at all. <laughs> so it's a really kind of neat system, how it works. And, uh, the only way you can see it is if you have like their, their public key, or their, their viewing key, because there's three keys involved. With Bitcoin, there's just two. You have the public and the private. Whereas Monero, you have public, private, and then you also have a viewing key where you can see what transactions took place. But again, you can only see how much was sent to to an address. You don't see where it's coming from because you need that private key to, okay. see where, <laughs> to see where that's coming from. So it's like really good. And they just issued an update. And the update's really interesting because they... 
they kind of shrunk the size of the blockchain so it's it downloads quicker and um performance is a lot better too but it's still like it's still a um a command based or command line based uh thing so they don't have a gui wallet yet uh, the reason why they don't is because when they were started working on it monero got hacked <laughs> so they had a uh, work more on on security, which it looks like they fixed. But well, it they did fix it. It it's 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 a it's. I think Dash got hacked by the same method too. So, you know that that fix has already been implemented. But yeah. Um, okay. So but it's the reason like it's it's the same kind of thing like like Bitcoin was. It had you you had the exactly, different yeah. keys, and then you had your wallet, and you did all these weird commands, mm-hmm. and uh, made things happen. Okay. Yeah, but cool. Bitcoin had so had a GUI wallet, which Monero doesn't. Okay. Yeah, but it's kind of oh, based okay. on that same kind of QT code that you see the original Bitcoin wallets used to have. You know. All right. Yeah. Anyways, but the reason why it's getting popular now is because a lot of darknet sites, uh, I think Alpha Bay is one. Yeah, um, are now taking it as their mode of currency because people are concerned about privacy. So if you can if you can trade with Monero, you're basically behind this thing, and you know as long as people don't have that that tracking key, and they don't have like an infinite amount of computer resources to sit there and crack a particular a, a transaction, <laughs> it's going to be uh, you know nearly nearly impossible. And if you can do that, yeah. then you know you can do a whole bunch of other things too. Sure. Um, yeah. So that's what Monero is. So I'm taking Monero now. I'm also taking Monero for orders now. Uh, I really do like this thing. Um, I traded in all my bit, Bitcoin, not Bitcoin. I traded all my Bitcoin in for Monero, which is only like fifteen oh, wow. bucks at the time, oh. and yeah, and now it's now it's worth like twenty five bucks. Yeah, now my account balance is about twenty five bucks worth of Monero. So I caught it when it was about six or seven dollars, and now it's now it's at eleven. Yeah, now it went up to eleven. So yeah, everybody's yeah, using it. Get in on this. Yeah. But it's been kind of cool. fluctuating around. It went down to like nine bucks the other day. So, yeah, yeah. But it's been up as high as thirteen. <laughs> wow, dang, that's cool. That reminds me a bit when when Bitcoin or Bitcoin was getting popular. I mm-hmm. listened to like Free Talk Live, and the first when I started, it was like five bucks. And I thought, well, wow, it's probably never going anywhere. But then a year later, it's up to twenty. I'm like, oh wow, it's probably gonna stay around that and then it bumps up to 600 and keeps going so we'll see that's neat yeah and the part of the reason why i don't like peter schiff is because he kind of convinced me not to use bitcoin when it was oh, yeah. <laughs> when it was 10 bucks a piece <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like screw you man you've effed me over good um yeah so anyways um guy. are you gonna start taking monero for uh <laughs> For, for jerky yet? Yeah, for jerky. <laughs> we need this. We need this in my life now. <laughs> I know. I don't. I st- I'm not. If I if I can get jerky, I don't have enough product to move to make into jerky. Um, then I'll start, you know, sending it to people, and then I would definitely take Monero or Bitcoin or Bitcoin because it's gone now. I don't know what the deal was with Bitcoin. I guess it's it's not around anymore, but yeah. people are still using it. Um. Or not. Just They're not using it in the same way people are using, like, you know, CD-ROMs. You know, the CD-ROM okay. point-and-click adventures from, you know, Windows 3.1. It's legacy software that's not supported. It's abandonware. Okay. Sure. The other day, it's abandonware. I think the pool is still open. I could check, but I don't want to. But I believe the pool was still open. And I ended up having, like, three grand, three and a half grand worth of BIP coin. Um, Dang. Yeah, that would have put my kids to rehab, but uh, yeah. that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you can't take Bitcoin for uh, for jerky. So have you looked for into jerky, what no. you need to do for jerky or? No, um, I no. know that I have to have. Uh, so you have to take it to the right place. Um, you know, I can't make it myself and sell it really? um, unless I was going to do it through an agorous means. Yeah, the production of food, and especially meat, is very heavily. Maybe it's not very heavily, but it's it's pretty well regulated. You know, you have to have a, if you're making food, you have to have a food handler's license. If you're mm. cutting up meat, you have to have a butchering license and the respective facility, right? So you got to go through all these hoops. But and not some for yaks, though, was it? 
you don't have to go through the same amount of inspections. Okay. Um, non amenable species have one less step than amenable species. So cattle are amenable, so they have to be USDA inspected. Yaks aren't amenable, so they are only supposed to be inspected by your state um, ag department or whoever covers that. It depends on your state, but I'm pretty sure everybody has pretty much the same thing. Got to have a licensed facility through the state um, department or whatever it is. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Um, <laughs> so that's the deal. And then, so it, it shouldn't be that hard. Um, the only thing is that, you know, it costs more for the butcher to do it. You know, it's a, it's a specialty um, value added sort of thing. And I don't, I don't know of any butchers um, who offer that up front. You know, everybody will say, oh, well, here are your cut lists, and this is what you can do. We have these various cured meats you can do, and they don't usually give you the options. Um, so I, I haven't really looked into it. I, I'll have to ask a butcher. Um, I know that my – the guy I work with with Yaks, he owns like half the herd here. Um, I can't remember what he said about jerky. I think he doesn't really like to do it. Just because it's it costs more to do, but then again, you know, it's forty dollars a pound to get a package of jerky. Um, wow! So it's it's pretty expensive. So I think that's what makes up for it. So I don't remember. I'll have to look into it when I butcher the next yak, which will be next year. I yeah, because that, yeah. that, that's really bad. <laughs> it's really that much for jerky. But jerky is kind of expensive, yeah. though. Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Right, jerky's delicious. I've had yak jerky, and uh, I know one guy here in Oregon does it. There's three people selling meat in Oregon, yak meat in Oregon, and one of them, um, he sells a lot of jerky. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm mixing up with the what my buddy said, but I'll have to do it because I want to try it out. And people have been telling me to make biltong, which I don't remember what it is, but I I looked into it. It's another cured meat sort of thing. Hmm. Biltong. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, biltong, B I L T O N G. It's like another cut of bacon well, th- type thing, or it's just not using the belly. Um, I have no idea. I think it's a jerky related thing. I think it's dried, maybe not not cured, but dried. Or bacon. Yeah, bacon. It could be bacon. Bacon without the, without <laughs> the belly. Is the, that what it is? I I, do, I don't know. Do you know. I have I don't know. This is I'm, that's why I'm asking. Oh. <laughs> I generally <didn't really> <laughs> well, I have no idea. I don't remember. So um. I was wondering about that because uh, Netflix has, and they, they they annoy the hell out of me with this. But they have Good Eats that show Good Eats, you know, with Anton Brown. Have you seen oh, the yeah. show? Uh, best yeah, some best food show period, bar none. Mm-hmm. There is no better show. Um, but he, but they only like have like these certain choices that you can choose from the episodes. Like they have a collection. It's the collection, um, and then oh. they had like two collections. Uh, which are kind of like best of, but they got rid of the first one. So then there was only the second collection, but then they added a third collection, which beef jerky was on there. And I was like, Oh yeah, there's an, there's a recipe right there for Nick. And now I'm hearing all this stuff. But, um, but w- yeah. the way he does it is he doesn't put it in a dehydrator. And the, the, the argument is like, you don't want to put it in a dehydrator because dehydrators cook meat. And if you're going to make jerky, you don't want to oh. cook it. You just want to dehydrate it. And there is kind of like a level of fermentation that goes on. And it's it's a okay. completely different thing. And the flavor profile is so much better if you don't. And he was doing it with a box fan and layers of air filters that you put in, you know, your air conditioner or your air filter or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting. Because I, I do that just to filter out air. <laughs> and so I was like, that would yeah. be even better if I could not only filter the air in my house, but also make it smell like beef jerky. <laughs> Oh, that is amazing! I'm I'm gonna try that for myself. Yeah, but he said like air it out of the window because it's <laughs> you don't want your house smelling like that. Oh, I was like, yeah, I don't want my house smelling with beef jerky. Speak for yourself. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, meat doesn't smell very good if you have a lot of it around, especially raw meat. Um, that stuff is. If you have a little like you get a cut from the store, it's not too bad. But when you have a butcher shop in your in your house, that's not. It's it lingers too, that smell lingers for like two weeks because we butchered a pig in our in our kitchen, mm-hmm. and it smelled like pork <laughs> for a while, and it was not a pleasant smell. I don't know, man. Having my place smell like pork for, 
uh, for a while. Yeah, that that sounds like an interesting, especially if it's bacon, man. If you can make my apartment smell like bacon twenty four <laughs> hours, I, I just cure do nothing but cure bacon all the time. It's like, what do you do with all this bacon? Nice. I throw it away, but it keeps my <laughs> my place smelling oh. great. I can't eat it. Stupid diet. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. What what cuts does does uh, the guy use to? To make jerky, um, I forget what which one he was pointing at, but it's it's kind of like a it's a cut that that people don't particularly like for anything besides maybe like stewing or something like that because it's okay. really kind of tough and and um, stringy, and you kind of want to cut along the you know the grains of the meat, and they just have like long grains of meat. Ugh, excuse me. Yep. So he has like this slab, and he tells you to. To put it in the freezer just for a little bit, just so it hardens up, so you can cut them into really thin, long strips along the grains. And then after after you're done with that, then you lay them inside of the little grooves inside of the uh, the air filters. You know how they kind of oh yeah yeah j- zigzaggy. Uh, so you just lay them inside of those grooves, and then you stack like four or five of them like that. And then you hook it up to a box fan and aim it out the window, and just let it run run uh, for X amount of time. But uh, they have the episodes on Netflix if you want to watch it. I think it's still on Netflix. They really kind of like to take – they really like to mess with that show because I hate it because I was like going back and like, oh, I want to go see that episode on how he made pizza. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> All right. So I have to go oh, find the episode yeah. and but through legal means, of course. Of course, legal <laughs> means. Um, you know, and find that episode and stream it legally and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, that sucks. I hate when they do that with shows. It, it's really sucky of them, yeah. but I guess that's the way they they make money. Yeah, and that's capitalism. Yeah. <sighs> well, I have to try that. I'll look into that and see what I can do next time. Instead of putting meat into stew, um, I'll just have I'll have them keep it for me, and maybe I'll just have them say so just package it. Um, in a rough cut, and then I can take it and make it into jerky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'll try the, that. And then if you donate to the podcast hashtag, I might uh, hashtag please donate. Yeah, hashtag please donate. Um, then uh, maybe I'll be friendly and send you a gift of uh, some yak jerky. Oh, here's a better idea: you start your own Patreon, and if oh, they hey. if they donate a certain amount, because you can you can put like levels. Like if you donate X amount a month. We need your address for this for this reward. Uh, you can get yak jerky. You'll get you get Ooh. a free. You'll get a stripend of, you know, of yak jerky every month. <laughs> oh, you that's work. a that's a nice business model. Yeah, there you go. Sweet. You know, if anyone else like, oh, it's 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 just a libertarian joke, of course. You know, yak farmers. Yeah. You know, don't you even <laughs> listen to Miller Miller. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm not actually selling people yak jerky. No. Yeah. What are you <laughs> crazy. talking about? Oh, all these receipts for USPS deliveries? I don't know. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that I, is. I drew this up myself. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably illegal, too. Yeah. Well, you know, agorism's great and all. But even though we're not agorists now. Did you hear about this? Yeah, we're not yeah, agorists yeah. now? Uh, no. Oh, okay. What's the deal here? Okay, I'm, so we're not aggressive anymore. Did you like the film alongside Night Starring Kevin Sorbo? Uh, I I never watched that. You, I thought about watching <laughs> when you guys were talking about it, but I I decided to not. You said it to not. So you're already judging judging the film and not liking it, right? You could experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. so now you're not an aggress, according to Janiel Shulman, who wrote this <laughs> long blog post. I should put this in the notes. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm actually making notes today so I can actually link the stuff that I'm talking about. I'm, I'm being a good boy, <laughs> I swear. But uh, he wrote this, this blog post, and the, the gist of the article is that if you, if you can't be a Christian if you, like, if you don't like the Bible, you can't be a Muslim if you don't like the Quran, uh, you can't be an objectivist if you don't like uh, along, or alongside night, if you don't like uh, Atlas Shrugged. So therefore, you can't be an agorist if you dislike the movie, the 2014 movie, Alongside Night. Because it has actual agorism in it, and therefore, because it has agorism in it, there you have to like the movie. <laughs> I mean, oh, I like video man. games, but Pixels was a terrible movie. Does that mean I don't like video games? 
<laughs> or retro video games rather that's what i really like sure the yeah the logic <laughs> the lo- you're a f- you you like philosophy perhaps Thank you can you, you you know, enlighten logic. me about what this means i don't understand help me understand this is uh this is basic epistemology jim it's an axiom <laughs> in and of itself that be- I can't even explain his logic there. I'm trying to think of how to do it. So it's if uh, it's I basic epistemology, it Jim. Ugh, what do you know about philosophy? <laughs> I bet you don't even like Molyneux. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if if A, um, I can't, I can't explain it. I can't like, explain it. If A is involved with B, and if you like A. Therefore, you must like B. And A is agorism. And A is yes. alongside night. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deny it. It's science fact. That's right. <laughs> it's not only just philosophy. It's not just sound mm-hmm. argumentation. It's, it's literally science. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I love I, that guy, though. I love <laughs> <laughs> James Sullivan. That makes me laugh. There's the, the beef you guys have is it's so entertaining. I, I didn't start it. I just reviewed his movie. I really didn't even know who he was. <laughs> I knew he was like a little bit. Like I, I knew he was like friends with Conkin. I saw his name on the Agris entry on Wikipedia, and I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> He's like an author. Okay. It was like, but I didn't really, I didn't really care. I was just a little bit more interested in, in the movie because the movie was so bad. And I was like, and then I had talked to a few other people, uh, X Omniverse, uh, the YouTuber, uh, it told me that, you know, the book was great, you know, but watching your review of the movie, it's like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> it looks like a, it sounds like a torture device. So yeah. And he decided he wanted to argue with me and have a debate with me. Um, in front of a live studio audience after the, a screening of the film. And I was like, you just don't argue. So we did an episode like when I was trying out MK Lords for the Lawbirds. We said she was a guest, but actually she was just trying out and she passed flying colors. Um, mm-hmm. But the, 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 prim- the reason why we were arguing about uh, Hateful Eight was one, she was wrong. But two, we wanted to actually show <laughs> what would happen if you actually debated a subjective opinion about a movie or about any, any kind of entertainment medium. And the result is just, it's just funny because it's, it, there's no real way to say like, Oh, that person is right because they gave sound argumentation (laughs) about why, uh, you know, their subjective feelings are, are more right than someone else's. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That was the point of it. Yeah, you can't say this is good, this is bad, right? Mm-hmm. There's no objective standard for aesthetics. Well, except like for I mean, you except- can say this had a had poor cinema- cinematography, and you can point out this and this is why. But what if you like bad cinematography? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, B movies are great. I I've it's- I've went back and watched Alongside Night, and I was entertained by it, be- specifically because it was a crappy movie. <laughs> Sure. Which, by the way, I will say, there is one movie that is objectively great, and that is Freddy Got Fingered, 2000, starring Tom Green. <laughs> Fantastic film. Wonderful. The, the fact that Rip Torn did not get an Oscar for that his performance was just shows you the the amount of bias and stuff inside of uh, you know the Academy. They're they're clearly stooges. Um, yes. Yeah. Paid off by the Jews that run Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said it either. Damn yak farmers uh, and their Jew conspiracies. <laughs> Anyways, um <laughs> So yeah, so you're 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 not an agorist. Like sure you believe in counter economics and taking down the state, whatever, but you but did not, not agree agorist. with with the fact, the science fact that this is a great film <laughs> and ergo a is for accurism and alongside night and B. What was it? Like, You're uh, wrong. I can't remember. B. Yeah, B, B is <laughs> bad opinion. Er, ergo, <laughs> wrong. Science. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of being wrong, well, dang. 
I was I just remembered this because I, that's I don't know why I noticed that little gasp. I was like, oh. No, uh, I remembered something. I wanted to talk about it, and I didn't write it down, but I remember it now. You did an episode of was a Disassociation Nation with Paul Gordon, right? Oh, yeah. So yeah, you want to yeah. recap on that and t- what say what sure. that was all about? Yeah, that was a fun conversation. I'm disappointed it didn't stir up as much controversy as I hoped. Um, but, then, you know, it's a small libertarian show. Uh, but I, I, uh, anyway... So I caught on there and no, was that a diss? Uh, what did I you, say? You pod yeah, beef? Um, sorry, you pod Paul. beefing <laughs> on my pod beef? <laughs> <laughs> you heard I it here, folks. Association Nation. Paul Gordon. And I love those the shows. Both nothing. Ball and is. It's small time. <laughs> yeah, you got no time for that. Just kidding. He's probably Go got ahead. more listeners than I do. So <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't say anything. But I can't remember what stirred it up. But Paul. Wanted to get me on because I probably said, "Oh, it was a it was a thread in the School Sucks podcast." I brought up something about left libertarianism and and thick libertarianism, and I was kind of having this debate on you know what what defines thick libertarianism versus thin. And, you know, thin is supposed to be only NAP, and then thick is thrown in feminism and whatever this is. I don't fully understand it. I'm totally giving out straw men, but um, yeah, a little bit. So I brought that up, and, and Paul invited me on to talk about talk about voting and the non-aggression principle and, and thick libertarianism, um, and what all that kind of meant in my mind and what my arguments were for saying that libertarianism isn't shouldn't at least in in my opinion isn't just about um, the non-aggression principle. Um, so we brought that up, and that's what we talked about. And so Paul kind of agrees with me there. Um, his co-host Niz doesn't, he's, he's still, uh, what I would call a non-aggression purist. It seems sort of, um, you don't, I, I think that when I, when I use that term, you know, what I mean is these people who, who are usually anarcho-capitalists who are very strict with the non-aggression principle, that's pretty much the only guideline in ethics. And if what you find is most people, including who I call purists, aren't very pure, right? There are mm-hmm. some gray areas in the NAP like child raising, um, that people are going to say, yes, of course, you're going to um, act without the consent of the child, right, to save its life, right? So most people are going to acknowledge that, so you're not going to find many people. But at the same time, um, you see a lot of people who say, well, if you violate the non-aggression principle, we're done with you. Um, And while I respect that, right, there's a reason behind that. Um, Aggressive people are not people you really want to be allied with or um, friends with or whatever but at the same time um, I think that there are valuable things to get done with certain movements like it, ones being on the left ones that we could ally with um, as libertarians to get move towards a freer society um, so that was kind of my argument and uh, I, I was basing it really off of philosophy of why do we need to follow the libertarian or why do we have to follow the non-aggression principle what does it have to do with libertarianism yeah, uh, I think there's there's some truth that it's linked, but I wouldn't say that the, that it, that it is a strict adherence to it. Yeah, sure. I don't know if you've. It's not really my arguments. Um, there's other people that have been making these arguments. I'm just kind of like interpreting them, um, mostly from David Friedman, who uh, wrote. Have you read the Machinery of Freedom? No, no, I've um, heard of David Friedman and and the book too. Though, so. yeah, it's a good book. Um, I. I've been I've been kind of ref, um, asking people to read that instead of the uh, the other book that I used to tell people to read all the time, which was Rothbard's For New Liberty. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because it it kind of it follows a little bit more my kind of thinking, and mostly because there's actually a paragraph in there because it's it's a full detail of what anarcho capitalism is. He wrote it about the same time for New Liberty, and Rothbard was coming up with these ideas for anarcho capitalism, but they did it independently from each other. They both kind of didn't was unaware of their works, respectively, and they both conceived of anarcho capitalism together, but separate. Uh, So they definitely have, but they different have different uh, aspects. Um, Friedman is a Chicago schooler, where Rothbard is straight line, non aggression principle, first principles, uh, you know, Austrian economics on top of that. So there was, there's like a little bit of a, a different kind of path, but that they got to the same place. So there was a, there's a chapter in there called Problems. And that whole entire chapter is about trying to, what the problems of trying to narrow libertarianism down into one axiomatic philosophy, specifically the non-aggression principle. 
And he says like, and he, he kind of poses a couple of problems. It's like, would you say that it's okay for me to take a gun, a revolver with six chambers, put a gun, put a bullet in one, spin the chamber, pull the, uh, pull the pin back and fire it against your head. And the answer is no, because you know, you're putting someone at, at risk. I was like, okay. So if, if putting someone at risk of danger is a violation of the non-aggression principle, then you can, what about, uh, you know, one in six, well, what about one in 12? What about one in 30? What about one in a hundred? Mm-hmm. What if we had a theoretical gun with a million chambers and there's one bullet in there and you pull the trigger, you know, spin it randomly, pull the trigger against someone's head. No, no. All right. So there's, there's, there, there can't be like this fuzzy area cause you're actually are putting someone at risk. What about driving a car? Everybody drives a car. The risks are so much better than one in a million that you could kill someone or hurt someone in a car, right? So then you would have to assume that driving, just the simple act of driving a car where there's other people on the road or people around the road, that you're putting someone at risk or putting someone else's property at risk, that you would not be able to drive a car because it's a violation of the non-aggression principle. Same thing with shining a light. Uh, if, you know, if, you, if I had a death laser, and I was shining it at your house and it caught your house on fire, that'd be a regression, right? What if it was half mm-hmm. as strong? <laughs> what if it was just, you know, a single photon of light? You know, it, you, you can't, if, if you're, you're still sending things onto someone else's property that they did not agree to beforehand. So that's, that's, what, that, that's where I have a disagreement with. It's like, I, I think the non-aggression principle is important, but you have to say there has to be some, some consequence, some 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 damage that's demonstrate you know that's, that's demonstrable before you can say okay now that's a violation and that's where i think the the complete hardline libertarianism with the non-aggression principle fails because it means that you can't smoke on your own property because particles can drift onto someone else's property you can't have lights mm-hmm. on in your house because those, those light photons will go into other people's property you can't drive a car which is why I have that card in my Libertarians Against Humanity that say, uh, you know, what is it, uh, an axiomatic, the only valid axiomatic philosophy that prohibits you from driving a car or something like that? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. where it came yeah, from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me, and that's that's something that, um, well, I don't, I don't make that argument. My argument's a little bit different, um, but I like that, right? That's kind of my one of my issues, too, is, is, trying to figure out all these weird little details Mm -hmm. right and this is where we get the how many libertarians can dance on the head of a needle right 18 it's kind of ridiculous i've done tests it's it's average average 18 (laughs) it's rough it's rough it's a rough time sure we could do it (laughs) and it's a really big needle go ahead yeah absolutely so (laughs) so what my argument is 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 if you look at the definition of what libertarian means, if you break it down, it means one who believes in liberty, the philosophy of liberty, um, or at least I guess maybe not the philosophy of liberty. I don't know what that means. It's a vague term, um, but somebody who promotes liberty. And if you look at liberty, the definition of liberty is freedom from external controls. So that's what you're pushing for. If you call yourself a libertarian, right, you're trying to free yourself or others um, from external controls. And uh, that doesn't mean non-aggression principle. Non-aggression principle is what narco-capitalists decided we were going to call ourselves libertarians, or you know, we call ourselves libertarians. We're also narco-capitalists. Therefore, you know, we like the non-aggression principle. This is how we're defining libertarianism. But the term libertarianism and the philosophy is much older than Murray Rothbard and the Libertarian Party, mm-hmm. right? These aren't. This is term that was coined by socialists you know this was this is ancoms and socks i've right? heard i've heard people argue against that really that it actually predates them Ooh, what like from classical liberals or something yeah so from even but there, there was actually like people before then who were kind of using the word libertarianism before the socialists were but i don't know how true those are but i do like how i can just say yeah, but that's just payback for stealing the word liberal. Sure. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely fine. But if you look at the, the, if you look at the word, right, that's the way it defines. And right, I'm, I'm a fan of like people like Jeffrey Tucker who say, let's, let's reclaim liberal. Jeffrey Tucker. People like I'm sorry. I love Jeffrey Tucker. I really do. He's, <laughs> but oh, he's, he's awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, but that's one of the I like things, making fun right? of the so alt right. Like, that's why I did it. It's yeah. making fun of them. It's not making fun of Tucker. Go ahead. I love Tucker. <laughs> Tucker, if you want to be on, call me. Yeah. You should, you should get Tucker on the show. <laughs> but, um, well, it's probably not going to happen. He's great. Yeah. We can we can find a way. He's like, anyway. I, I think he's a little too edgy. And not only that, but his, <laughs> his impersonation of me is just rather offensive. How could you say that I would actually like Burger King? That's offensive. Go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, um, I forgot what I was saying. I don't remember. Kind of hard to follow that up. I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, that's so my point is, is that's not really the definition of libertarianism. If you look anywhere other than um, anarcho capitalist scholars, you're not really going to find many people, uh, many dictionaries calling libertarian the philosophy that promotes the non aggression principle. And it's not in the non aggression principle, is not in the etymology of that word. So while I think it is important, right, it's, it's not um, an axiom that, that libertarians must follow the um, not aggression principle if they're going to call themselves libertarian, mm-hmm. right? But if you look at it and if you extrapolate, you know, freedom from external controls, aggression is a form of control, um, then yeah, then let's let's get rid of coercion and the initiation of aggression as much as possible. Yeah, but there was but, also a part about you. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I already did. So. Yeah, so go ahead. Go ahead. It's not. I don't. <laughs> my point was not. well i was gonna say there was also a part in there about voting right Mm -hmm. where you guys were arguing about voting that's where i came in because i i was like oh nick's on right now and i think i came in like an hour late and i just noticed you posted something about that and i started listening to it so that's where that's when i started listening and you guys were talking about voting and paul gordon was going hard in the paint against you about how voting ergo not libertarian and i was like i don't agree with that yeah, so I would say that it's voting is probably a, I say probably because I think that it's it's part of that risk thing, mm-hmm. right? Like what you're talking about with the bullets in the chamber. You don't know who if you're voting for somebody. Let's say you're voting for elected office, right? Uh, you don't know what this person's going to do. Maybe they will um, not initiate aggression. Maybe they will um, find a way to refuse. However, they're being paid. Um, cause most, most, uh, at least people in the legislature get compensated for their time. You know, maybe he's finding a way, maybe he's actively working to, um, be or not veto, but vote against any new bill, right? Maybe, um, but you don't really know, right? So it's a risk. So if he's going to n- not initiate aggression when he's in office, then maybe your vote wasn't. But, um, if he does, and you don't know if he's not going to, um, I think that if you vote for somebody who ha- initiates aggression you're probably initiating aggression Mm -hmm. that's my argument and then you know i just don't that's fine like by me if that's a that's a level of aggression that i don't mind that much i don't mind taking that risk yeah see Um, i don't i don't think that your vote counts as an act of aggression though okay yeah i'm i'm i i sided with that argument because i didn't care you know i didn't want i don't know I honestly don't know. So I'm willing to hear what you, you have to say. Well, if, if, okay, so let's say that I, I vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to. But let's say that theoretically I vote for Hillary Clinton because in this, in this scenario, I think that you know that her wanting to help the poor is a good thing and all these programs she wants to do and she wants to expand Obamacare to make it cheaper and blah, blah, blah. And, and I really believe all of these things, that she's going to do all these things. And, you know, like non-aggression principle, yeah, a bunch of crank libertarians believe in that. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, you know, I, I'm just all about this, you know. Like, I'm just all about, like, what really matters. Those libertarians don't matter anyway. And I, I, I get it. And the inevitability is that she's not going to do any of those things. That's, that's what the inevitability is. She's going to say that she's, oh, I'm not hawkish. I don't think we should go and bomb all these countries. But, you know, her history, you know, she was for the Iraq war. She was for the Libyan, uh, or she she did it. <laughs> that blood yeah, is actually yeah. on her hands. Uh, same mm-hmm. with Syria. All these, other, all these other conflicts, whatever. She has blood on her hands for doing that stuff. So when she sits there and says, like, I'm not going to go to war with all these other people, you know for a fact that she's lying. So if she's lying about that and she's lied about other things before, she's lied about stuff that she said she was going to do while she was in the Senate. You know, her husband lied about things that he was going to do while he was in, while he was president. (sighs) 
She lied about things she was going to do while she was being the Secretary of Defense, on and on and on and on. And Obama did the same thing, and he's he's endorsing her. What makes you honestly believe that she's going to do any of the other things? She could just get into office tomorrow and just say, like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to collect a paycheck. I'm not going to veto or... Uh, or I'm not going to veto and I'm not going to sign in any laws. I'm just going to let them rest on my desk <laughs> until they rot. <laughs> and I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit back and smoke weed with Gary Johnson. She could theoretically do that. And she 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 probably might get uh, impeached for whatever reason. But she could do that. So there's no there's there's no way of me for me saying that. And then the other the other thing is. Is that by me saying you have the authority to sit in that position does not mean that I'm that I'm one consenting, which I'll get into in a second, or two, that I am giving her the right to do that. Because again, if I don't know what she's going to do, I can't really endorse anything that she does do while she's in office because I don't know. You can't endorse something that you don't know what's going to happen. I could say like I endorse this policy that she does, but there's no guarantee that she's going to do it. Now, as far as consent goes, Lysander Spooner had already addressed this issue in the 1800s, <laughs> right? He wrote a book, I think it's called, what is it, the uh, something Constitution, or No Treason. But he yeah, has a thing yeah. in there about um, the Constitution of No Authority. And he goes into like detail, like why you can't say that, that voting for, for the lesser of two evils or three evils or whatever evils were out of time, because they had more choices back then. But um, but you can't yeah. voting for the lesser of evils is is just a, is is just like you know defending your house from from a thief. You know you're you're using whatever you can whatever means you can to defend your life and property from people who want to take it. So no, I don't buy that, yeah. and it's not consent because I'm not saying I consent to everything you said. You can't. No one does. Even people who love Hillary Clinton, God. That's disgusting. But people who do, <laughs> they exist, unfortunately. <laughs> they don't even agree with Hillary Clinton on everything. Nobody agrees with Hillary Clinton on everything except Hillary Clinton. Sure. I don't, I don't even agree with everything that most libertarians say. I don't, I'm, I'm a Friedmanite, and I don't agree with everything Friedman says. There are things that I can disagree with people on. Yeah. It be impossible. So it's not, yeah. You're, you're, it's you're, okay. buy, you're choosing from a basket of goods. And you may not like bar of soap, uh, that particular bar brand of soap that came in that basket, but you like everything else a little bit more than the other baskets. That's what you're voting for. It's gross, but... Yeah, so how is that not a violation of the migration principle? So all, I mean, the basket of goods that you're taking from is being forced upon everybody else, mm -hmm. right? At least with the people, uh, you know, whatever good you're going to choose, you know, whatever they're going to do is going to be forced upon everybody else. So isn't that but isn't the, that supporting but the, the choice is already going to be made? What do you mean? Whether you vote for it or not, the the basket of of goods is going to be forced upon you no matter what. Okay, yeah. So that's I mean so the initiate the aggression has already been initiated. Yeah. Is what you're the saying. The state is already exists. The sh you know the 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 uh, the second government already exists. So even if you get rid of the politicians and stuff like that, there's still layers of bureaucrats, unelected bureaucrats who makes rules and regulations for people every day that you have absolutely no say in. Even if we elect, even if you know Gary Johnson didn't get the nomination and it was, you know, it was uh, Will Cooley for vice president and who was the end cap? Daryl Perry. If they if they got the nomination and they won the president and they. Sh shut everything they could down they still have these layers of bureaucracies they can't do anything about yeah nothing about so in either way if nobody showed up to vote tomorrow or whatever the election is <laughs> tomorrow um so, so let's say that tomorrow no one just just no one in vegas voted for mayor do you know what would happen the mayor would sit another term because we know this yep. because it's happened <laughs> <laughs> like where, where there there have been instances where no one showed showed up to vote, including the people running for office didn't didn't show up to vote. They just didn't bother, and all they did was they just sat another sat another uh, term. That was it. The government's got to keep their seats. Yeah, so that that's one of my things. I I got beef with people who say no, don't don't vote, don't consent if nobody show up to vote nobody get elected it's like, no yeah that's not gonna happen and even if you could get everybody not to vote 
there's still going to be a few. Like a majority of Americans are supposed, I think, if I remember my statistics, don't vote. They're not yeah. registered to vote. So I don't think they care if people don't vote. No, no. I think they, they do they, care they a little bit. What they see it as, but what they, do s- vote. what they see it as is they see it an endorsement of, of the outcome. Mm-hmm. That's what they see it as. And that's what they see when no one shows up to vote on top of that is if they say like, well, apparently they don't they don't mind everything that we're doing. So we're just going to keep doing it because they didn't bother to vote me out. That's their that's their yeah. line of reasoning. And that's that's their that's their official stance when they come out in the election and no one shows up to vote or when they realize that, you know, 60, 70, 80 percent of the population doesn't vote. They must yeah. like what we're doing. Carry on. Business as usual. You know, yeah, voting is not going to change anything. I will agree with them on that, <laughs> sure. but not voting isn't going to change anything either. So you know, if you if you got the free time to go down there and you know, vote for Mickey Mouse or Vermin Supreme, just to just to kind of upset the apple cart, do it. If you got one of those crazy people who's running for office, which I'm going to be doing soon, you know, who's going to dress like a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> and and just say that he's going to do everything, uh, do nothing in office except say no and vote no. You know, just just to just to be a jerk, then do it. Vote for that guy. Vote for vote for your Bourbon Supreme in your area. There's always someone running like that. There's always some lunatic. There's always some <laughs> the rent's too damn high guy. There always yeah, is. Yeah. And if you don't, whatever. Don't <laughs> yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, telling people what to do is so libertarian. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm agreeing. Yeah. Yeah. I support that. All right. Was there but, So that was that was basically, I don't oh. know. I don't think we have any. Oh, I don't remember. I have nothing have else to say to you, Jim. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you covered the coyotes. We got the farming stories. You got the Monero. We got the pod fading. Got the beef jerky. Agorism. Paul Gordon. NAP. Oh, voting. Voting. Get the Patreon. Yes, go 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 subscribe, and you can hear extra stuff, extra extra, ep, extra episodes. And uh, yeah, if you want to do one, if you ever if you if you remember something you didn't want to talk or that you forgot to talk about and you did want to talk about, let me know. Okay. We'll record something. All right. But uh, yeah. Anything else? Just do you want to plug your website, um, even though you're still pod faded? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping to start back up. I have episodes recorded that I need to edit and upload. Do it. Um. Or do it no, raw. I've got they've got other stuff. No, I'm I'm uh, I won't do stuff raw. It has to have my intro and outro and no <laughs> swear words. I have to I have to go through everything. Okay. And bleep it. Um, most of the shows I have, I don't think have any swearing. But I'm hoping to get back on it because I'm I'm trying not to focus on podcasting at all. I'm trying to keep it out of my head mm-hmm. so that I can focus on making money and uh, farming. But I'm hoping to get back into it when it starts raining because I won't have anything like to all of my projects that I have to do outside. I won't be able to do because it'll just suck being out there. So we can um, expect stuff will just slow down after market. Yeah, when it okay. starts raining here, and it's we had a few days of rain, but it wasn't enough. Like, but in October we'll get the rain, and I'll I'll be forced to stay inside. I won't have anything to do except edit. So that's when it'll happen. Okay. But if you'd like to find that my archive of shows. On the Anarcho Yakitalism podcast, you can go to an yak.com and yak.com. And if you look up Nick Hazelton, I am the most famous Nick Hazelton on the internet, mm-hmm. and my website will be there. Yeah, I'm actually coming up to being the the most popular Jim Jesus, most famous Jim Sweet. Jesus. I'm working there's on like it. There's like one more, right? There's yeah, there's that rapper. I, I, it was, it was oh, like the first Jesus. episode. Ugh. Yeah, no, was Is it he the still first? around? No, not Slim Jim Jesus. No, 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 no. He, I, I don't think he's mm-hmm. really a thing anymore. I haven't heard about him in a while. I hope not. No, the uh, the original Jim Jesus was Telephone Jim Jesus. Uh, I don't oh, know if he's. A, I don't think he's a rapper. I think he's like a. He he produces. I think he he produces beats and stuff. Oh. I never really. There's a lot of anti con stuff I like, but I never really got into that. And it's not because I don't like it. It's just because there's just so much good stuff. It's kind of hard to hit everything, which is why I always tell people like. Why don't you listen to Ernie Hancock? It's like there's so much other stuff. I've never got around to listening to it. I have. Yeah. Which, by the way, yeah. I want to record a, a parody thing on him, which is going to be funny. I think he, I think he'll he's think it's fun. funny. Yeah. I met him at Porkfest. That guy is great. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's I, awesome. I don't listen to the show. I've heard a few shows with him, but, mm-hmm. I mean, he's he's awesome. Yeah, we were hanging out at Jackfest. 
He was he was on the show. Sweet. Glad to oh, listen. Really? To you listen to the oh, show. I saw that. <laughs> you know, no, I we, we only do a podcast together. You know, it's not like you have to listen to it or anything. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've listened to like five episodes of the Lulberts. Well, you got you got plenty to listen to. I think there were eleven. Last time I checked. Eleven. <laughs> 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 to be How honest, I don't know what episode we're on. I think we're on twenty-four. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm gonna start listening. We got pounds. Lulberts so great, <laughs> even the even the <laughs> they listen they to listen. it occasionally. Depends on the day. It's raining. <laughs> yeah. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with a Bipcot no-guff human license wristband. This wristband has a no-guff patented no-guff hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. Doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. Them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lulberts podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at Lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in most of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.